Hello everybody and welcome to another Inkscape video. My name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Um, this week we have a bit of a slow week because a lot of what I'm doing is both uh, prep work and unpicking uh, some of the issues that have cropped up over the sort of mutation of the code over time. Um, but before we get into the de de details for that, um, as always I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors. Um, thank you all so much for helping me spend the time on Inkscape. Um, you know, we're, we're slowly building up uh, the ability to do more um, and tackle bigger projects like this PDF pro project. So thank you. Um, okay, so what did I mean? Um, if you remember from last week, I've been investigating the PDF uh, input for Inkscape, trying to clean up some of the ways that we open up PDF files and um, allow people to edit what they already have. This includes um, AI files for now. Uh, oh, a side note on that, actually. I did a whole bunch of investigation into AI files themselves, including like how to pick apart all the postscript and all of the like pieces that um, Adobe Illustrator itself uses. Um, one of our contributors, uh, Jonathan, was interested in those notes to continue it on. No promises, no idea if that will go anywhere, but I'm kind of excited to see if it's possible to unpick that further and, and get actual native AI support and not just uh, PDF uh, support. Um, it was actually funny, one of the uh, contributors actually sent me a link to a website that uh, purports to turn um, AI files and PDF files into SVGs. And uh, I had to turn around to them and say, uh, this website is just using Inkscape um, because you can open up the SVG files and you can see Inkscape's header file, like header in, in the SVG. So it's <laughs> it's no better than what we already have because it literally is Inkscape. Um, okay, so what's going on in PDF land? So one of the biggest differences between SVG and PDF is that SVG is like like websites starts at the top left hand corner, right? So when you're drawing things, you specify units by how far away they are from from the top left. In PDF land, you start from the um, the bottom left hand corner to get that right, um, and therefore all of the coordinates are flipped, right? And when you open up a PDF file, all of the coordinates need to be flipped around so that, like, if you have a... Uh, squares don't matter that much. If you have a circle here, then you flip it and it has to end up in the right place on the page. Um, but there's something interesting about text. You can't just flip text around and expect it to essentially be readable, right? Because it ends up upside down. What you need to do is you need to translate or move the... Uh, what's known as the, the the position of the text, the um, the baseline of the text to the correct position on the page, and then uh, render all the glyphs on the on, on that line. Um, that means that text is a special case, and a lot of the problems that we have with the PDF opening in Inkscape is that it's filled with exceptions, like lots of um, oh the gradients didn't work, oh clipping didn't work, oh text had these issues and they all cropped up over time as people reported issues and then somebody went in and fixed it but the fixes were not holistic and in a lot of ways it's created a bit of a monster of a of a process that um, it, it's not entirely clear why the, it's doing some of the things that it's doing is it just a mistake that the pro programmer made or a, a, is there a reason um, and one of the reasons why this is taking time for me is uh, I have to break a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I had text all over the place trying to fix the transformations this, this week. Um, so what I had to do is I had to take some time out to spend building uh, PDF sample files. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Gwiz, or Gmiz, uh, for helping me uh, generate some of the some, some of the PDF files. He found some good good websites where those were evident. Um, but so I've generated some sample files that contain like all of the elements that I need to test, both text elements with various positions and transforms and things, and also shapes. Um, I also needed to test things like multiple pages, labels on pages, uh, all this other stuff, uh, clipping, gradients, um, patterns. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll add more to those tests as I go on. 
um, and we'll see. We'll, I can actually use it for both exporting to PDF and also opening back up again. Um, but I also opened up some older P PDFs, making sure that like, because there are like a hundred different ways of writing PDFs that look ex exactly the same. So you really do need like a whole brace of different PDF versions to, to test the code properly. Um, but I'm happy with the fact that I've managed to fix text this week. I know it, so it sounds so lame. It's like, oh, I've made it, I've made the text not be broke again. Um, but it's the, it's, it's, it's much, much cleaner now. The code, it, it, it makes sense. It's commented. Um, and it's not, uh, full of like all of these like crufty transformations that just seem to happen for no, no reason. Um, and next is to work on gradients. Gradients are currently broken the way PDF files don't really have gradients. It's a whole thing. Um, but the, they also have a special case and the code has t there's tons of code dealing with great gradients that needs to be cleaned up in a very similar way, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically my way of saying I've got not a lot to show you on the front end, but I'm hoping that you'll continue to bear with me as we do this P PDF work. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see where we can go. Um, in other Inkscape news, this is uh, features and fixes in Inkscape that I didn't do. I want to first of all ha highlight Habir. Um, Habir has been working on a bunch of live path effect fi fixes for a while now. He has, he's had the branch open for I think about three months, and he's finally got it merged. Uh, congratulations, Habir! I know it was a lot of work. I know PBS helped you with that one. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of interesting um, just behind the scenes fixes and also front end fi fi fixes. So I think everybody who uses Live Path Effects will be happy with the with, with the results. Um, Jonathan Newhouse has been working on the Microsoft uh, XAML or XAML vector for format, uh, fixing a whole bunch of issues, but actually rewriting it from scratch. He's written a whole new ver version of it. Uh, very exciting to see, plus the improvements to the actual extensions for framework itself that he's had to do for that. And uh, I want to highlight Raphael's work on fixing Inkscape's internal geometry code. Uh, there's a library we use called lib2geom, um, and he's been fixing a whole bunch of uh, essentially functions that allow you to tell when lines are cro crossing, when lines are, are you like in, infinitely aligned and th things like that. These are questions that you have to ask uh, the geometry in order to be able to do many of the things like shape builder properly. Uh, currently the shape builder has a bunch of code in it that tries to help get around some of the problems. If you notice mm, tiny little gaps between circles and the rest of the objects when using the shape builder, this is hopefully on the path towards fixing the geometry code in Inkscape to make that not be a problem. Um, but that's about it for this week. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I feel like I was a bit ram rambly today, but um, yeah, we're going to continue on doing the PDF work and um, I, if eventually I'll get to the actual colors, <laughs> but I am reading uh, some of the documentation that uh, uh, Jim has sent, sent over as well, because it's got a really interesting <laughs> sort of like gu guide to P PDF, um, how, how to write uh, baby's first P P PDF uh, re renderer, um, which is nice, although for Java. Um, so I'll see you all next week, and thanks for watching.